Okay. Good evening, everybody. I'm Giovanna. Um, Cassie had asked me once a month to host a team connection call just where we can get on here, um, share what's going on in our lives, our day, just to connect with each other, connect with new team members. Um, this really isn't a training. It's more just walking away with a little bit of insight, enlightenment, maybe a little bit of information that you can use in your daily life, in your business, in your life with your family, um, in, in your other jobs that you may work. Um, but the topic that I wanted to pick for today um, is forgiveness. I feel like the last year and a half has been crazy for everybody. It's always different levels for each person, but I feel like COVID and everything related to it has really impacted people's lives in ways that we never would have imagined. And in some ways, people are carrying a lot of guilt, whether it's things that they didn't do, things they did do, things they weren't able to do, or things in their lives that were just out of their control, but they decided that it was their fault or they were responsible for those things. And so people are carrying around guilt and shame and all of these feelings that maybe aren't necessary for what you experienced or what happened. Um, so I wanted to talk about forgiveness and not only forgiveness of yourself, so self-forgiveness, but also forgiving other people in your lives. Um, in my personal life, I'm dealing with ugly custody battle and it's been almost two years now. We have court on Thursday, so I'm hoping that we can get some resolutions, but part of this sprung from me just deciding that I need to forgive him for what he's doing, not because it's okay, but because I can no longer carry the grudge that I have and the anger because it's poisoning me and having personal peace is important. And I feel like sometimes you get so angry at someone or a situation that's out of your control and you internalize it. And people are just so heavy right now, I feel. So I wanted to kind of embrace this topic and I did a lot of research for the call so that I can share some tips with you guys. And then um, I write poetry. I had a book of poems that was published back in 2012 and I've done a lot of writing workshops with people. And I did a writing exercise in one of the classes that I did and I feel like it is relevant to this. And I really, I feel like it applies to anyone in any point in their life. So I think it'd be really fun to try at the end of this. Um, so some things about forgiveness. Like I said, your personal peace is important. Um, holding a grudge is self-sabotage. I'm sure you guys have heard the term. It's like drinking in poison and waiting for the other person to die. Like it really poisons yourself and that's not healthy. And it can actually manifest in medical um, outward showings, like people getting sick, like physically sick because they're holding on to so much. Um, and sometimes you have to understand you can't help some people and it doesn't matter. Like sometimes you have to accept an apology that's never coming. There are some people that will just never, they're never, one, they're never gonna apologize because maybe they're just a jerk or they may not even realize that they've done it because the way they've lived their lives and the, the lens that they look through in their life, they don't see it as something that was hurtful. So sometimes you just have to walk away again, accepting that apology that's never gonna come. Um, being able to forgive yourself or others requires empathy, compassion, kindness, and understanding. And it also requires you to accept that forgiveness is a choice. And I think that's a really big thing is it's like any other emotion, like you have to actively choose to do it, whether it's forgiving yourself for something that you've said or done, a mistake you've made, or another person. Like it's an active choice that you do for yourself. I found this really awesome affirmation. It's a self-forgiveness affirmation. It says, I am human. I act in the best way I was capable of in that moment. I have grown as a person. I am grateful for increased insight and opportunity to make a better choice from now on. I accept this about myself. I allow myself to be at peace with this and I forgive myself, which I'll share some of this in the group. So you guys have notes later. 
and obviously this is being recorded so um you guys will be able to watch it because she'll post it i have um i think it's 12 steps for forgiveness yes there's 12 um which i'll share but before i start do you guys have any questions or any input or anything you want to share about like that topic i don't know if it's something that speaks to you or um i tend to find when i pick topics somebody in the group it's like they needed to hear that or something <laughs> that you know for that moment and if you don't have anything to share it's okay too okay i will start um number one is focus on your emotions so acknowledge and process give yourself permission to recognize and accept your emotions are valid so sometimes i feel like it's just a bit of unpacking what those emotions are because it's kind of like an onion it has a lot of layers so even though you think you might be upset about topic a once you start to unpack that, you find that really the root of it is something else. And once you do that and you focus on the emotions that you're feeling, sometimes it's way easier to forgive yourself for whatever it is that's happened or to forgive someone else. Number two, acknowledge the mistake out loud. So when you give a voice to the thoughts in your head and the emotions in your heart, you may free yourself from some of the burden. Sometimes just speaking it, just getting it out of your body um, I write a lot. I never really tried the verbalization. I journal and write. Um, words are just kind of my tool. Um, but I understand how um, that would be very helpful. Um, it says that um, you also imprint in your mind, you've learned from your actions and consequences. So you're hearing yourself say whatever it is that you're acknowledging that you've, you know, I recognize that I did this thing and I forgive myself for it. Number three, think of each mistake as a learning experience. I think it was last month, if you guys were on the call, I talked about failing forward, how mistakes are not negative and they're not a bad thing. They're actually a good thing and something that helps you move forward. Um, so it says, I believe situations will repeat well this is something i personally believe the situations will repeat itself in your life until you learn the lesson you're supposed to learn um i feel like people are the same kind of people will circle back into your life because there's some lesson you're supposed to be learning some way you're supposed to be improving yourself and if you don't make those changes or learn those lessons i feel like you keep running into those same kind of people or keep attracting those same type of people same with situations. I feel like they're very interrelated. Um, mistakes are the key to moving forward faster and more consistently in the future. Meaning if you're learning from the mistakes you're making, then in the future, you know, you've already made that mistake. You don't have to go through that whole process again. You can kind of skip forward because you've already dealt with that, hopefully acknowledged that and grown from it. So you'll be able to move forward faster is what I took from that um understanding you did the best you could with the tools and the knowledge you had at that time you're not the same person you were last week you're also not the same person you were two years ago i mean we've all survived a lot in these two years and i don't feel like anybody is the same person that they were before covid came so knowing that maybe the choices and decisions you made in the beginning of 2020 are different than what you would make now because you have a different knowledge base and you have different um, factors that you understand now or things in your toolbox that you can use to handle that situation in a different way if it ever were to present itself again. Um, number four, give yourself permission to put this process on hold. This I think is a really important one. If you're having a hard time, visualize your thoughts and feelings about the mistake going into a container such as a jar or a box then tell yourself you are putting this aside for now and will return to it if and when you benefit from it i think so many people and there's another one of these that talks about this so many people focus so much and it's just like a tape recorder they just keep playing it over and over again like oh this mistake i totally screwed up like just over and over and over. I think a lot of people do that in their business as well, especially when you're new. Like if you make a mistake, maybe you didn't handle 
how you would introduce somebody to this business or you didn't handle um, a negative response well. And sometimes that just gets stuck in your head and you're just like, oh my gosh, I screwed up so bad. And you just keep focusing on it. Sometimes you just need to put that aside and give yourself permission to just not deal with that right now because you don't have the energy for it or it's not benefiting you in any way. Um, number five, have a convo with your inner critic. Um, journaling can help you understand your inner critic, which I also call head trash, it's the negative self-talk that's in your head. And um, you, it can help you develop self-compassion. Um, you can make a list of the qualities you like about yourself, including your strengths and skills. And this can help boost your yourself when you're feeling down about a mistake that you've made. I think sometimes writing it out and seeing it, I don't think it's a, um, I know some people see it as kind of a conceited thing, like writing down things that you like about yourself, but it really is good for journaling. It's a good journaling activity. Um, and it just kind of gets it out of your head again and like onto paper so you can actually see. Because I think sometimes we're overcritical of ourselves. And when we're thinking about a mistake we've made, we tend to not lie to ourselves, but overinflate things. And I think when you see it on paper and you actually take the time to write it out, you can kind of look at it with fresh eyes and be like, okay, this isn't really as bad as I thought, or this isn't really what I did. Um, oh, it said I was signed out. Bloop. I don't think it's gonna kick me out. Oh, there's Miss Cassie. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm excited. How are you? <laughs> Good. So we're um, going through, we talked about forgiveness mm -hmm. and I'm going through 12 steps um, for forgiveness, whether that be self forgiveness or forgiving someone else. Um, and, and I'm recording, I think it's still recording. So yeah. you guys will be able to share it. Um, so I'm on number six. So notice when you're being self-critical, um, notice when your harsh words show up and you can write them down going back to the journaling and you might be surprised by what your inner critic actually says to you. And sometimes you just need to verbatim write what you're hearing in your head or what you're saying, that head trash I was talking about. Because I think seeing it on paper, you would never talk to your friend that way. So why do you talk to yourself that way? Um, number seven, quiet the negative messages of your inner critic. So an exercise to do that is on one side of a piece of paper, write down what your inner critic says, which tends to be critical and irrational. And on the other side of the paper, write self-compassion, right? A self-compassionate and rational responses for each thing you wrote on the other side of the paper. So you're pretty much changing your thought process based on what your head trash is saying. And I think a lot of times, um, we don't, even though we play things in our head, like, and a lot of them are just on this loop. And there are things maybe from our childhood, things from adult figures in our lives, they, they get ingrained in you. We don't realize how bad they are. But I think if you write them out, like if you're trying to work through forgiveness, whether it be for yourself or someone else, and you're focused on something, if you actually write it out and look at it, I feel like a lot of times you have an epiphany because you're just like, no, I really don't think that way. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, something we would never tell our kids. Um, number eight, get clear about what you want. If your mistake hurt another person, you need to determine if the best course of action, do you want to talk to this person and apologize? And is it important to reconcile with them and make amends? But one thing I will caution you with, there are times in your life where wanting to apologize and make amends to someone is selfish. There are times you really need to think about, am I doing this because I hurt them and I want to heal their heart, not unburden mine? Because so many times people are like, oh, I need to apologize. But a lot of times people frame apologies as an explanation as to what they did wrong. That's not what we're talking about here. This is talking about unburdening yourself and giving yourself forgiveness, but also forgiving other people that have harmed you. Um, number nine, take your own advice. 
oftentimes it's easier to tell someone else what to do than to take your own advice. I know we're all guilty of that. <laughs> Ask yourself what you would tell your best friend if they were sharing this mistake they had made with you and then take your own advice. I know that's easier said than done. Um, number 10, quit playing the tape. This is what I was talking about earlier. It's human nature to spend time and energy replaying your mistakes. While some processing is important, going over what happened again and again won't allow you to take proper steps to forgive yourself. Stop and focus on positive action steps, deep breaths, go take a walk. Interrupting the thought process can help you move away from the negative experience and reduce stress and anxiety. Sometimes you just have to take yourself out of that loop to recognize what you're doing to yourself. And especially people um, who struggle with mental health, this can really be a spiral that they get caught in because something that might be a very small thing to them becomes a very big thing. And then they just keep circling and circling and circling and they get consumed by it. And sometimes people I think that struggle with mental health have a harder time pulling themselves out of that loop. And things like um, taking a deep breath, going on a walk, things that maybe are meditative for you or calming for you may help with that. Um, number 11, show kindness and compassion. If your first response to a negative situation is to critique yourself, it's time to show yourself kindness and compassion. This takes time and practice and a reminder to yourself that you are worthy of forgiveness. I think that's also a big thing is sometimes people, whether it's from a history of abuse or maybe verbal negative talk from another family member or someone they care for, some people get it in their mind that they're not worthy. Like, oh, it's okay that they treat me bad because that's, you know, my purpose in life. That's how everybody treats me. That again is negative self-talk, negative head trash. Um, so it's all about digging deep and figuring out where that's coming from. Like I was saying before, like unpacking it, peeling back those layers and just keep like asking why, asking how, and just keep digging to find out, you know, where is this really coming from? And number 12, which is the last one is seek professional help. Um, it can show you how to break unhealthy patterns and replace them with new and healthier ones to cope. I feel like mental health and therapy get such a negative connotation in society when really it is so healthy to have a neutral third party that isn't a friend or a parent or a sibling or a spouse to just talk to and unload. Sometimes you just need to get it out. Nothing more. Like you just need to tell someone and unburden your heart and then you're better. But not having that or not feeling like you can do that is hard for people. And I'm happy that there's kind of this movement I feel that's kind of removing the stigma from both. And that makes me really happy because so many people struggle with mental health. And I think that's a big component of this. Um, I have an exercise I wanna share, but since we have a couple more people on here, I'm gonna circle back to something I shared earlier. There was a self-forgiveness affirmation that I found that I really loved. It says, I am human. I acted in the best way I was capable of in that moment. I have grown as a person. I am grateful for increased insight and opportunity to make a better choice from now on. I accept this about myself. I allow myself to be at peace with this and I forgive myself, which I can share this in the group, but I just really felt like that was awesome. So this exercise, it, has a lot to do with forgiveness, but I feel like it also just has to do with everybody's lives in general. So I did this on a writing workshop and it, it was a really powerful experience for the people that were in it. And it's not something you guys have to do right now, but I just want to challenge you to try and do it this week. So you're going to take two pieces of paper and one, you're going to trace your left hand. The other one, you're going to trace your right. And then one hand inside of it, you're going to draw a right and draw if you want to use pictures, all the things in your life that you want to hold on to. And it can be whatever you personally want to hold on to. So on the other hand, in there, you're going to draw everything you need to let go of. These can be 
people, place, things. They can be emotions, whatever. And this is really, this is a dig deep type exercise. You can use colored pencils. I mean, you can use whatever you want, but it's more symbolizing your hands and holding and letting go. So in there, you can write as big or as small. You can fill the whole space. Like you can make it however you want. You can keep it private or you can share it. It's really up to you. Um, I'll do it as well. Um, but I just challenge you guys to work on that and really kind of unpack maybe what's going on in your heads right now. Because I, when we first started this, I was talking about how the last two years have been really hard for people. And I feel like people are carrying around a lot of burden and a lot of grief for maybe things that they really had no control over, but they're blaming themselves or maybe even blaming others. And I feel like now is the time to let go of all that and unburden yourself from it because it's not healthy. And we just need to move forward. So that's all I have to share. <laughs> and if you guys have any questions or want to share anything, please feel free. You know, I'm always here to chat with everyone. So good. What was y'all's takeaway from what she talked about? Anything that stood out? I struggle with it, I think, the most is I can tell somebody, um, you know, to stay positive about their self, you know, quit talking bad about yourself, always say I can, not I won't, but I don't do that to myself. You know, I, I wait, and then I'll get caught on it, too. Sometimes I'm like, well, do as I say, not as I do, you know, because that's what I struggle with. I think everybody struggles with that, honestly. Oh, yeah. To some degree or another. Agree. Anybody else? Uh, so Cynthia said the challenge. She's really, it's a great idea. And she, I think she sounds like she's looking forward to doing it. I love it too. Awesome. It's, I mean, so the writing workshop, like I was telling them, I had a book of poetry that was published back in 2012. And because of that, I'm a survivor of trauma. I was sexually assaulted when I was a child and writing was what I used to cope. And so from that, I've done lots of writing workshops for women who are survivors of um, sexual abuse, domestic violence, sex trafficking, and that sort of thing, and using writing to heal people. Um, and we did this workshop with a group, a very small group of women. It was about six women. And the things that they were able to process that they'd never even talked about with therapists, doctors, friends, family was just amazing. So I feel like if you just let yourself open up to it, like you can really discover some things that maybe you, you didn't realize you were holding on to. Yeah. I know that I had to take, so Jason does um, cross trail outfitters and I have, I'm going to be helping and I had to watch a ministry safe um, course. And the things that I found out there were astonishing. And obviously this, the, the whole training was made several years ago. So it's probably even worse now, but some of the things like most people don't, you know, they hide a lot of what's happened in their childhood until their thirties. And so a lot of the times, none of that comes out until later on in life. And so just know that that's normal and okay, but it's definitely something to always look into and get better at of healing and processing and moving forward. Um, yeah, definitely. Man, just so good. If y'all ever need to watch that, it's hands down. It made me appreciate homeschooling even more um and all the things that we do just to keep our girls safe like I feel like I'm a little bit more helicopter stuff but I'm like our world's just gotten so sad is the best way to put it and we really have to be more cautious more than ever you know for the things that might have happened in our childhood are like tripled in theirs so know that sometimes that weight can be heavy, but it's something that we are blessed to have 
on all the things. And I have both of my girls down here now. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm not peeing. She's not peeing or whatever. She's pouring a cup. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, I love, I think it's really good. The journaling is huge. I know when I go through grief or trauma or whatever is going on, journaling those thoughts down when sometimes you don't want to verbalize them or tell them to other people or whatnot is better. Mm -hmm. There was a training that I did, a Jewel training, not that long ago. Um, and this lady came on and she talked about how sending a draft to yourself before you ever hit send because sometimes those emotions and that anger and everything of hurtfulness and whatever can come out obviously a lot harsher in an instant than it is in a draft you can continually work on that you can continually make it better yes your thoughts and you know things are validated but making sure that you're saying it in a loving and kind way and in a way that you would want to receive yourself if somebody hurts you or you need to gain forgiveness from and things like that. So, so good. I, I found it interesting. So there is an app that my ex and I have to communicate through about my son and it's called our family wizard. You pay to be a part of it and it tracks messages, expenses, Yay. all that kind of stuff. But then you can also allow your attorneys to be a part of it. But something that's interesting is they have something you can pay extra for and it's called a tone indicator. And so it filters your message before you send it and it'll tell you if your tone is aggressive or negative or accusatory or anything like that. I didn't pay to use it, but I just thought it was really interesting that there's services like that, that they've developed for just that reason. Yeah. I think that's smart. That's your draft right there. Having other eyes right? look at it. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of the times we all know this when we send a message or send a text or something like that. Our message can come across a hundred different ways and it was not at all what we intended it to go across. Oh yeah. Um, so man, that, I think that happens a lot more nowadays because everybody's so on edge mm -hmm. uh, with anxiety and frustration and everything in the world. So. Yeah. Just emotional burnout. Oh yeah. It takes so little to upset people mm -hmm. these days. But I'm not going to make this dreary and everything like phone call because I'm going to end it on a, on a good note. <laughs> I was like, so, she's going to come here and share what she can. <laughs> so I did do a live. I did do a live wow. on what you guys, so go check it out on what you guys should be doing right now. Again, there's only so much. I really can't say anything, but I can say things that I would do if it was me. <laughs> and so what I would do if it was me is, and so the call that I was just on is we were writing down things that we're going to start putting into play now, because the last thing you want is June 1st to happen. And you're like, why didn't I do everything Cassie said? <laughs> okay. So know that I'm giving you a heads up. These are the things you need to do right now. Okay. So, um, customer appreciation. That is all across the board. That is to your ambassadors, to your customers. I want you to send a thank you note to every single person. Yes, I know this takes time. Trust me, I do them often or I try to. It takes time, but it is well more valuable to have a handwritten note than it is to just have a text. Hey, thank you for your, you know, support. Like it just, it means more, at least for me. You guys, when I get a note from anybody, I save them. Like I have a whole board of postcards that I've ever gotten from anybody in Plexus because it just seeing those words of affirmation and just everything, they took time to do that. And yes, you can send cards that are hand print or I mean printed and whatnot, but when you get those in the mail, those Christmas cards that are like that, and there's no pen to ink or anything, you can tell it was like automatic computer. Do you feel special? Right? Take the time to send every single person in your organization a message. That is anybody that's a white line. That is anybody that you feel like could just use some love and encouragement. Do it. Um, that's the biggest thing that I can say. I would say also, um, map out where you want to be the end of this month. Like if you need one-on-one -on -one conversation, um, I can stay up a little bit late tonight or we can do it whenever. Um, map out where you wanna be by the 31st um, because when June 1st rolls around and you're already hit what your goal was, 
June 1st, just say it's going to be maximized. And if you're close to another rank, it might potentially happen. So you putting in the groundwork now to get close to where you want to right now, don't like minimize like, well, I just want to hit this or I only want blah, blah. Y'all go for the moon right now, because if you don't, then it's June's not going to, it's still going to be great, but June could be way better. Um, dive into your back office, look into training your brand new people. You know, we've done this a long time ago. I'm going to start trying to do this again, where we do a, a zoom specific zoom where we pop on our brand new people. And I don't mind doing this. You guys could do this one-on-one -on -one too. Don't always wait on me for, to do it as well, but do brand new zooms for your brand new people where you are just showing them the back office. A lot of people don't know what points are. A lot of people don't even know where anything is in the back office. So dive into them, show them new things, show them where new ambassadors start here under business. And just, you know, you have your live it, love it, track it in there. You have your leads you didn't know. You have all these things that I feel like are underused that Plexus gives us. And they're like, hey, let's make your business better that we're not using. And so really utilize that and sit down and take some extra time with your people and get on a Zoom or go to their house and show them all the things. Um, but I feel like the biggest thing you need to do right now is appreciation, hands down. Appreciation, I don't care if they stopped a year ago, you never know if they're still breathing and they're ready to come back. And appreciation, if they are even a partial pv -er. that's all I'm gonna say. And like love on them because they are still valuable even if they don't hit that 100 PV. Um, they are still as important. They are still as important then, and your customers are still as important as an ambassador. Like treat them the same. Um, next thing, well, I'm gonna do a lot of product information on the page. You're gonna see a lot of that. I feel like we haven't done that in a while. A lot of people don't understand how great and valuable our ProBio 5 is or our active. And so just product knowledge, because I'm seeing that when I'm posting that, a lot of people are adding those things to their order. They don't know what Edge does. They don't know that, you know, Slim does so much. Sometimes they're like, well, I just want the probiotic or I just need this, you know, adding those little things. I'm going to start doing that. But if you can, I would be like, hey, I don't know if you saw this on, because you can tag all day long. How many people miss a notification? Y'all, I try to keep up. I'm telling you, it is so hard. Reach out to those people and say, hey, Giovanna, I don't know if you saw this, but Lean, Cassie just posted about the Lean. Did you see her? Did you see her post? It's such great information. Most people are like, no, I didn't have time or I didn't get to see it. Would you like me to show that in here so, it, so that you can like look it, into it or whatever? Do that. Because we have gotten so numb to technology that, you know, when we see those notifications and things like that, it's like the last thing we want to think about, at least for me, especially an email. I have like 2000 emails that I don't read. So, um, so product info, I'm going to be focusing a lot on that because I think it's going to be a good thing that a lot of people know about all of our products, not just a few. And that's about it. Just no big, big things. Like you guys are just, we are so not blessed. Not even ready. <laughs> no, you're not ready. I'm telling you, I literally <laughs> cried several times. Like awesome. just in the fact that we have a company that already had an amazing comp plan. They didn't have to change anything. They didn't have to do whatever they're about to do, but they are doing it. And apparently it's been in the works for years, but they primed it. They're, they're making it perfect. They're doing everything they can to like, make it wonderful, whatever is coming. And it's wonderful. Amazing. And you're going to cry too on the 25th when you find out, but do not wait till the 25th. Like I cannot stress that enough. Start now because you're, you don't want to be like, Oh man, those two weeks ago when Cassie said to do that, I should have done it. Y'all. I just ordered thank you cards. I have them shipped to my house. I literally did it before this phone, before my phone call with Jessica Heffley. I have cards coming in do that right now. Amazon prime is going to be your best friend, get those cards and get them right to your house right now. I paid 10 bucks for like a hundred of them. So do that and get a lot of stamps and just post them all into your post up, like your mailbox, whatever, put the flag up your mail lady, put little candy or something in there. It's going to be fine. 
clean out the spider webs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe do that too. But <laughs> so good. So again, talking about forgiveness stuff, if there's ambassadors that you might've had hard conversations with or that fell off that you just, whatever happened in that situation, love on them now, forgiveness, move forward and just know that timing is always perfect in God's eyes and know that he has a perfect plan for whatever is coming and whatever their journey, their focus on them, not just you, their journey is going to be because it's going to be really good. Really good. That's exciting. I know. But yes, if you guys need one-on-one, please let me know. Um, we can, can you stop the recording? How do you stop it? Can you stop it? Okay.